What an archaeologist does is finds artifacts from past cultures and uses those artifacts to put together meaning about what that culture was about. And so by looking at these artifacts and what they find, you then piece together a story. And that creates a history. Anthropologists look at today's cultures and say, how is that culture, how do people interact in that culture? And we tend to think about these things, well, it's not our culture that they're looking at so much, right? No, it's actually some tribe in South America or something. Or is it? We certainly have a culture. And in fact, engineers, there's a whole field of engineering anthropology. That is to study the culture that you're going to make your products for. So, again, now coming back to this, you know, we got this stapler. So you found this thing, this stapler, you took it apart. Then you actually went and watched a video about this really cool Paper Pro stapler. I like this stapler. It's a pretty cool stapler. You, you like that stapler too, dude. I can tell you. But what's this have to do with anything? So, to really put this into perspective, Remember, this was 3,008. It's hard for us to fathom a thousand years, a thousand years into our future. Well, maybe we could put our, wrap our minds around this a little bit if we thought back to a thousand years in our past. So let's look back at 1,008. What was going on in 1,008? And, and by the way, all these uh, pictures and information that I'm going to talking about here, I found on the web. I did my own web quest in preparing for this talk. So all this stuff you can find on the web. You could do this research yourself. So I said, well, what was going on in 1008? Well, in 1008, it was actually the end of what they called the Dark Ages. It was in the Middle Ages, but towards the end of what they called the Dark Ages. And what was going on then is that if you thought about um, the way information, uh, what was going on with information at the time, is that Books were reproduced by hand. Books were very rare and very expensive because they were reproduced by hand. You wanted to get a book, somebody had to actually, by hand, take one book and copy it over by hand into another book. And it was mainly done by monks. And so the people who had books were either the very wealthy or mostly the clergy. And so because there weren't many books, there wasn't a whole lot of information sharing going on. Because also, people tended to live in one location their whole lives, live, work, die, pass on to a new family, all in one location. Wasn't a whole lot of moving around going on. And so they call this the Dark Ages because we don't also, in that period of, it's right, roughly around 450 AD to 1000, there wasn't a lot of stuff that came out of those times. And so they call it the Dark Ages. So there wasn't a lot of technological advances going on. In fact, there were some, they just weren't being moved around much. Okay. Well, then I started looking a little further and said, okay, so what started happening next? Well, you know, what caused the end of the Middle Ages? What was happening? And, and so about 1445, this guy Gutenberg invented the printing press. Now, this was significant because the printing press, up until then, people were do writing things by hand. After the printing press, this allowed <coughs> books to be mass produced. And so, not a, so now, things like publishing could happen. And so people could share information. And so what this really did was sparked this sharing of information. And so the printing press, this artifact that was developed by Gutenberg, really was the engine that, that was behind the Renaissance. And you'll learn all about these things. But this awakening of sharing of information. And scientists at the time and people that were creating stuff were sharing it around. They'd publish it and other people could then read about it. And that sparked new thoughts and new thinking. 
What's interesting about this Gutenberg press and how technology has developed is that Gutenberg, he was German, lived in Germany. He lived in the wine region of Germany. And if you look at this press, it actually is a, like a press. And the idea for the press came from, um, he watched how wine was made. And you take the grapes and you got to get the juice out of it. So you press the juice out of it. And the way this, this works is that there's a bunch of little tiles that look like the tiles in your Scrabble game with a bunch of letters, except they're, they're raised up a little bit where the letters are. And you take a bunch of these and you lay them out in the press to make your words and your sentences. And then you, you put some ink over top and you pull down on this press and it puts it on the paper. Take another sheet, do it again. It's pretty arduous, but it's quicker than writing it out over and over again. Yeah. Yes, they do. Isn't that a, this is great. You've seen this. I'm impressed. Okay. So this Gutenberg press was really the, the way that the Gutenberg press was actually used for about 300 years. No advances in this press for 300 years. And it is in the library. And it's in the library by a group of some of my students. I, I teach our senior design course at Bucknell. And there's a um, a group of our students, this Professor Rich, his interest in engineering, he's an engineering professor, is in the history of technology. And so he has students for their design projects tend to be something in history. And one year he had them um, design and build, fabricate, reproduce a Gutenberg press. So they made this. And they had to use the technologies of the time, or try to. It's actually really hard to do. And once they finished, it's actually a beautiful piece there. So the library wanted at Bucknell. So you can go to the Bucknell Library and you can actually see this uh, Gu Gutenberg style press in the Bucknell Library. Okay. So I said, you know, nothing really was going on with changing the way printing was done for 300 years. Now 300 years, 1445 plus 300 gets to where? 1700. What's going on in the 1700s? What? Yeah, the Revolutionary War. That's right. Now we're in America. There's some stuff going on in America. And I like to think about Pennsylvania. And one of my favorite, absolute favorite people is Ben Franklin. Probably the most famous Pennsylvanian ever. And people know Ben Franklin, and you might, you know, Ben Franklin did a lot of stuff. And one thing that Ben Franklin was known for is that he was an inventor, right? You remember this, uh, he, and a scientist. He, he discovered electricity, right? Or, you know, with that, with his kite, as the story goes. I don't know how true that story is, actually. But he invented some things. He invented the bifocals, the lightning rod, right, to, to take the electricity, so, the electricity from a lightning, instead of burning down the house, it'll go to the rod. And the wood stove, and a bunch of other stuff, actually. But this is what he's best known for. But you know, fundamentally, if you ask, you know, what was Ben Franklin? What was his job? What did he do? He was a printer. And this is significant, the fact that Ben Franklin was a printer, because before the 1700s, printing was done primarily in England. So we were the colonies, and printing was done over in England. That meant that the news and information was coming from over in England. So England was deciding what people read. So until the 1700s, when printing started in America, and it was, in fact, Ben Franklin's older brother started the first newspaper. He was a printer, started the first newspaper in Boston. And Ben Franklin was a, his apprentice. And, and then he left and to move to Philadelphia and started his own printing operation and his own newspaper. So he started the Pennsylvania Gazette. And not only was he a printer, but he needed content to go into this newspaper that he was printing. And so he didn't want to use his own name, so he made up names. That's what pseudonyms means. He made up names. So he started writing articles under different names. But he still needed to get this news. And so he'd get the news from other colonies through correspondence 